Okay, so this video is looking again at the May 2019 Physics High Level Multiple Choice Paper. This is question 19. So it says a horizontal electrical cable carries a steady current out of the page. The Earth's magnetic field exerts a force on the cable. Which arrow shows the direction of the force on the cable due to the Earth's magnetic field? So this is a question where we need to use Fleming's left hand rule. So you need to use your left hand and then you need to use your thumb, your first finger and your second finger. Your thumb will be for the motion, so that's going to point in one of the directions A, B, C or D. Your first finger is going to be for the magnetic field, so that's going to need to point down the page in the direction of the arrow shown in the magnetic field. And then your second finger is going to need to point, is for the current, so it's going to need to point out of the page. So the finger, the Fleming's left hand rule hand, I'm going to attempt to draw this here. So your thumb should be that way, your first finger should be that way, your second finger should be pointing more or less out of the page, and the other fingers are down here like that. So that should be the diagram. So this here is your second finger for your current, this here is for the field, and then this one here is for the motion. So I think you can agree that that is in direction B, so the correct answer is B. So this question, satellite X orbits a planet with orbital radius r, satellite Y orbits the same planet with orbital radius 2r, satellite X and Y have the same mass. What is the ratio centripetal acceleration of X divided by centripetal acceleration of Y? So we're going to want to use the equation for Newton's law of gravitation, which is F equals G M M over r squared, where F is a force, G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass of the planet that they're orbiting and then m is the mass of the satellite so m and m are going to be the same for both g is also going to be the same and then r is the distance for the radius so because i've got f here i can change that into f equals ma from newton's law so i can say a and then the m is going to cancel out is going to be g m over r squared so that's going to be the formula for my centripetal acceleration and then for a for x sorry it's going to be g m over r squared and then the acceleration for y is going to be g m over 2 r squared so i can then see that acceleration for y is going to be g m over 4 r squared so the acceleration for y is one quarter of the acceleration for x when i was to divide them this ratio here is going to be one divided by one quarter so it's going to be four which is answer d Okay, looking at the next question. It says a motorcyclist is cornering on a curved racetrack. Which combinations of changes to the banking angle theta, coefficient of friction mu between the tyres and the road allow the motorcyclist to travel around the corner at a greater speed? All right, so in order for them to corner at a greater speed, we're going to need to have a greater force towards the centre. This force here towards the centre of the circle is going to need to be greater then that's going to enable them to corner at a greater speed because this F is equal to mv squared over r. Since mass m will be the same for the motorbike, the radius will also be the same. In order to increase v and hence v squared, we're going to need to increase F. So anything which increases the force towards the center of the circle, the centripetal force, is going to help with us cornering here. So if I draw in the reaction, the normal reaction force here, for the motorcyclist is like that. Now I can divide that up into two components. So I can have a horizontal component and a vertical component. The vertical component is going to be equal to the force of gravity, the weight of the motorcyclist, but this horizontal component is going to be towards the center of the circle, this one here. And the greater we can make that, we're going to make the force greater there. So by increasing the angle, that horizontal component would become greater. So therefore, increasing the banking angle would help. The other thing we're going to have is a force of friction um, from the coefficient of friction is there. And again, we can split that up into components. So this component here is also towards the center of the circle. So increasing the friction would increase the force towards the center, so increasing the coefficient of friction would also help. So in this case, we want to increase the banking angle, we also want to increase the coefficient of friction, so the answer to this question would be A. Okay, 
Um, this next one says, diagram shows the emission spectrum of an atom. So we've got increasing wavelength there. So the thing to realize here is that this is increasing wavelength. So actually increasing energy would be the other way around. So right, looking at this spectrum here, what we can see, we've got four lines here, which are quite close together showing high energy. So those would show large changes in level. And then we've got two here quite far away showing small changes. So in order for this, our atomic levels to be, we would need to have two small changes. Okay, where energy levels are quite close together, just two of them. And then there should be four where you can have much larger changes. So looking at our diagram here, in this case, that would be a small change there. 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 So any of those could cause our small changes, which would be these two down here. But only A has got two of them. C and D have only got one each and B doesn't have any. So it should probably be A. We can then also check. So for the, over at this end, we've got four large energy changes. So large energy changes. I've got different ones. There is one. There is one, there is one, and there is one. So again in A, there's four possible different changes for high energy changes, so it should fit A. On B, all of our energy changes are more or less the same size, and all in the middle. In C, we've got some different energy changes, large ones, but um, have we got four? Not really, we've got like one, a two, three, four, but then again, there's much more spread out than in A, so I think that A is probably the correct answer. Okay, next question. Carbon isotope, um, isotope 14,6 carbon is radioactive, it decays according to this equation. So we can see here we've got carbon 14 decaying into nitrogen 14 plus X plus Y. So if we look first here, the atomic number of carbon is six and the atomic number of nitrogen is seven. So this number here is increased. It's gone from six to seven. To balance our equation, we're gonna to have to have minus one here so we're going to need to have a beta minus particle. So X is going to have to be beta minus. So that means it's going to need to be A or B. C and D we can rule out. And then you should know when you have beta minus radiation also produced as an electron neutrino, which is this one. So the correct answer here is B. All right. This one says the rest mass of helium isotope 32HE is M. Which expression gives the binding energy per nucleon for 3,2-HE? Okay, so binding energy per nucleon is going to be the difference between the energy of the constituent parts or in the difference between the mass of the constituent parts and the mass of the isotope. So because it's 3,2 helium, it's going to contain two protons and then one neutron. So the mass of the constituent parts are going to be two times the mass of the proton plus the mass of the neutron. And then because we want the difference, we're going to need to take away the mass of the original, uh, the rest mass of the helium altogether. So the binding energy is the difference in the mass. So the mass of the constituent parts take away the mass of the final thing. And then because it's binding energy per nucleon, we're going to need to divide that by three. And so that's the difference in mass. And then we need to multiply that by C squared from the equation E is M equals MC squared. So the total binding energy is going to be the difference in mass times c squared and then divide 3 because it's per nucleon. So that is answer B.